Let's go. Okay, so, um, okay. So, I thank you all for coming and having this important day for those of us who are being baptized. This is no small thing, it's not a small event. Uh, we're celebrating a powerful, regenerate work of the Holy Spirit in our lives uh, who open our eyes to the truth of His Word and the Gospel of Jesus Christ. So, here's my testimony. So, um, returning to the U.S. for my roughly half year study abroad in Spain in fall 2018, I thought everything was on an upswing. I had just gotten reused to speaking English <laughs> and had gotten plugged into the two churches, got re plugged into the two churches I was attending at the time. And one of them was a Hispanic Pentecostal church that I had previously attended. Um, neither one was a biblical church. Either way, I was not prepared for what happened on my second week back in the country. So on a Thursday in January 2019, I left a networking event for an engineering group on campus and ran across two men walking to their cars, and I can't see. <laughs> some winter wipers. Um, so I walking to their cars after a meeting of some sort. These two men were Pastor Mike and Sergio. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and they were turning from their Tuesday night Bible study at UCF. They looked heavy burdened, carrying a couple pizza boxes. <laughs> and um, leaving college student, I thought I'd help them out. And I asked them for peace, not knowing what I was getting myself into. <laughs> so yes, I am the infamous pizza guy from Pastor Mike's evangelism testimony. Um, so I asked him about the cross he was wearing that I saw he had on his, on his neck. And he said that he was also, and I said that I was also a Christian. So we talked about that. I can't remember all that we discussed, um, but two things stuck out from that conversation. And they were, who is God? And is God angry? I was originally taught that God was love, and this is the only thing I knew about God. In a conversation with Pastor Mike, I mentioned the statement, God's crazy about you. I remember asking, how can God be wrathful and love at the same time? Pastor Mike helped me understand the love of God in the context of the justice of God. Because God is a just holy and loving God. He hates sin. God is a holy and just wrath toward all men and women who have sinned against him. This is why the word of God says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. This means that in the same way you get paid wages for 40 hours of work and you have, and pardon me, 40 hours of work if you have lived your whole life sinning against God, then God will pay you what you deserve. That's right. And your earned wages will be death. Mm -hmm. So therefore, because God is just, holy, and loving, anyone with sin will not enter into heaven when they die. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of sin. Sin is transgressing God's law. Sin is not a slip-up, a mistake, or me simply not being perfect because nobody else is perfect. Sin is an undeniable part of our fallen nature since birth, and affects us in our thoughts, speech, and actions, and is an attack on God's holiness. After a few months after that conversation with Pastor Mike, this truth became more evident in my life. While I was living in Spain, I had been a slave to sexual immorality and pride. I had blasphemed the name of God and demonstrated a complete disregard for His holiness with a superficial zeal for Him. This fake zeal for God served as a cover-up for my sins. I used his grace as a credit card that I could swipe at any time without ever having to worry about the debt. I also realized that this was not just limited to that time. This was a pattern in a practice of my life that went back years before going out of the country. My pattern of life had nothing to do with Christ. And I'd like to show that with what John, 1 John 1, 6 says. If we say we have fellowship with him, Jesus, and yet walk in the darkness, living in and practicing sin, we lie and do not practice the truth. In chapter 2, 6 of 1 John says, The one who says he abides in him, Christ, ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. John also commands us, Do not love the things of this world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So, if you're consumed by such things as work, money, school, then you're not consumed with living for the glory of God. These truths 
showed that what I clung to as faith was worthless, completely vain. I saw that my life was not found in Christ, but in my love for sin and the pleasures of this world. The God that I worshipped was a false God that allowed me to do what I wanted to and not feel bad because I was told that the grace of God covered all my sins. Mm. Last summer, the Holy Spirit opened my spiritually blind eyes and I noticed a growing hatred toward my sin. Mm. By the grace of God, the Lord showed me that when I face my judgment day, because I have broken all of His commandments, I deserve to be punished eternally for every single one of my sins. Understanding this reality, I respond to the gospel by repenting of my sins and turning to Christ, who went to the cross and died to pay for the sins of those who would repent and put their trust in Him. So I have an admonition or an encouragement um, for those of us who are here. I'm very happy to see my friends and family who have come to support me on this very special day. I would also like to direct the following to all the friends and guests of our church family. Maybe you claim to be a Christian because you grew up in a church and had even at one point asked Jesus into your heart. And maybe you can say yourself a good person in comparison to others. The real question is this. If you died today and God asked you, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? Would you say that you deserve to go in heaven because you asked Jesus into your heart? Would you say that you deserve to go to heaven because you live a moral life in comparison to others you know? Or would you say that to God that you should enter heaven because overall you've done good works and you've tried your best? Know this. If God would let you into heaven for any of those reasons, then Jesus Christ died in vain. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Why do I say this? Think about it. If you do any work that will get you into heaven, the death of Christ would not be needed for the forgiveness of all your past, present, and future sins. The reality is that no one can go into heaven based on their good behavior or good works. The only people who will ever enter the kingdom of God are those who place their trust in Jesus Christ by responding to the gospel in repentance and faith. Amen. Amen. Dear friends and family, if you think you are saved because of everything, because of anything you've ever done, let me say that you are deceived and in danger of the judgment of God. But praise God that you're here today. God wants you to know that your only hope is in Christ Jesus. He lived a perfect and sinless life, the one that you and I could never live. The same Jesus Christ later went to the cross and died between two guilty thieves, though he was without sin. This Christ, who died on the cross, paid the penalty for those of us who, time and time again, of sin against the Holy God. The only biblical response to this message of love and hope is to turn to Christ in repentance and faith. If you have any questions, please come see me or any of the, any, any one of the brothers or sisters here. And don't leave that clarity on that. Your eternal life is at stake. I love you, and I thank you for being here. And I have a special thanks um, for a couple pe people in particular here. I'd like to thank Pastor Mark. Uh, pardon me. Yes, Pastor Mark, thank you for faithfully preaching God's word Sunday after Sunday, which the Holy Spirit used to convict me of my sin and show me who God truly is. <laughs> Pastor Mike? <laughs> Pastor Mike? Thank you for doing God's work and sharing the gospel with me. Thank you for that pizza pizza. <laughs> thank you for the pizza. That's good too. <laughs> Chase. Chase. Right here. Right here. Chase, there you go. Chase. <laughs> thank you for pouring into my life and sharing... All those Paul Washer sermons with me, which the Holy Spirit used to convict me of my sin, God's holiness. Braulio. There you go, Braulio. Uh, thank you for talking with me for hours and hours on the phone about the gospel and showing me my absolute need for Christ. Edgar. I can't begin to describe how the Lord has used you to shape my understanding of the gospel for me to Christ. And others... Um, Thank you to all the other brothers and sisters of this church who have encouraged me and poured into my life. Um, that the Lord may lead me to salvation. I had Brother Noel say, um, and I, I'm going to take his, his line because I think it's important, but don't, don't let me go. Um, don't let me stray from 
from Christ and, and go back into my sin. Thank you all. Um, so in, in closing, thank you and praise God for all of you do, all of you who do His work and preach the gospel. I am a fruit of that work. So praise be to God. Nick, again, we just as with the others, we are very grateful to baptize you. Praise the Lord for your salvation. And based on your evident faith, having turned from your sins to put your faith in Jesus Christ for salvation, and based upon your commitment to follow Him as a member of Cornerstone Baptist Church, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Buried with Christ in his death.